People have a variety of uses for deserts. Often people visit to see the beautiful sandy colors and rock formations, the open sky. It's a quiet place to get away from cities and spend time in the open land. The desert offers many types of recreation too, rock climbing, hiking, and dirt biking, mining, grazing, road building, and utility projects take place there as well. But that's not all. From the remains of dinosaurs long extinct to the massive strange formations captured by satellites soaring through space, 20 most shocking things captured in the desert. <laughs> Libyan Desert Glass Since its official discovery in 1932, scientists have always been fascinated by Libyan desert glass. The origin of desert glass, however, is uncertain, so a bunch of theories have been thrown around regarding how it came to be. The two prominent theories took opposite approaches. Some experts argued for a slow-cooling glass origin story, while others were adamant that Libyan desert glass was created from a meteorite impact, or, at the very least, a cataclysmic event that produced the massive amounts of heat required to turn sand into glass. Either way, technically the glass is called impactites. The slow cool theory was based upon studies that pointed to fossil rock and higher water content than had previously been measured in glass like this. In addition, and this was a major piece of the slow cool argument, there wasn't a crater present that was big enough to be responsible for the distribution and amount of Libyan desert glass that was observed. However, much of the scientific community remained adamant that the glass was the result of a titanic impact, aka a meteor. It's dated as having formed about 29 million years ago. The glass is nearly pure silica, which requires temperatures above 2,912 degrees Fahrenheit to form, hotter than any igneous rock on Earth. What they captured in a desert terrifies the whole world bones, and lots of them. Some of these bones were left frozen in the position in which they died. There's only one kind of event that can preserve skeletons this way, or so we think, volcanic eruptions. Mount Vesuvius, for example, the ancient city of Pompeii thrived near the base of Mount Vesuvius at the Bay of Naples. In the time of the early Roman Empire, 20,000 people lived in Pompeii, including merchants, manufacturers, and farmers who exploited the rich soil of the region, with numerous vineyards and orchards. At noon on August 24, 79 AD, the peak of Mount Vesuvius exploded, propelling a 10-mile mushroom cloud of ash and pumice into the stratosphere. For the next 12 hours, volcanic ash and a hail of pumice stones showered Pompeii, forcing the city's occupants to flee in terror. A giant cloud of hot ash and gas surged down the western flank of Vesuvius, engulfing the city and burning or asphyxiating all who remained. This lethal cloud was followed by a flood of volcanic mud and rock, burying the city. When the ash cleared, many skeletons remained like this, preserved in a desert landscape. Talk about scary! Comment below with the hashtag open discussion and let us know what you think about this. New Dinosaur Species In a Sahara Desert oasis in Egypt, scientists have unearthed fossils of a long-necked, four-legged, school bus-sized dinosaur that lived roughly 80 million years ago. The plant-eating dinosaur, named Mansaurosaurus, was nearly 33 feet long and weighed 5.5 tons and was a member of the group called Titanosaurus that included Earth's largest ever land animals. The scientists recovered parts of its skull, lower jaw, neck, and back vertebrae, ribs, shoulder, and forelimb, back foot, and osteoderms. The researchers determined Mansaurosaurus were more closely related to European and Asian titanosaurs than to those from elsewhere in Africa and other southern hemisphere land masses. Mansaurosaurus, which lived near the shore of the ancient ocean that preceded the Mediterranean Sea, is one of the very few dinosaurs known from the last 15 million years of the age of dinosaurs on mainland Africa. Its remains are the most complete of any mainland African land vertebrate, during an even larger time span, roughly 30 million years before the dinosaur mass extinction 66 million years ago. This was the Holy Grail, a well-preserved dinosaur from the end of the age of the dinosaurs that paleontologists had been searching for for a long, long time. Whale Fossils in Desert 
There's another even more ancient Egypt that is known to very few people that contains some of the best preserved paleontological sites in the world, the Valley of Wales. This is a remote valley in the western desert of Egypt, near al kartrani mountain range. A well-known and viable geological site for its rare vertebrate fossils and megafossils. There is considerable evidence that indicates that the region was submerged in water some 40 to 50 million years ago. Today, the area is occupied by numerous excavation sites of whales, sharks, petrified mangrove bushes, a wide variety of fossil plants and various other remains of the prehistoric sea. One is bound to come across petrified corals, shark teeth, and fossil remains scattered all over the valley. The landscapes are just as impressive and amazing. The valley lies in the midst of a desert landscape of wide, eroded rock platforms surrounded by sand dunes and hills. Hundreds of buried fossil skeletons have been lying trapped for millennia in sandstone formations of the ancient sea are being exposed by the wind as well as the archaeological works. The revealed fossils are mainly those of ancient whales from the earliest types which are now extinct. Nevertheless, the precise reason so many ancient whale fossils are located here is yet unclear. Nabta Playa The UK's Stonehenge reigns supreme in the category of famous stone circles. The site garners over a million visitors per year. To many, it is the prime example of the mysteries that still remain unsolved. But more than 2,000 miles away, in southern Egypt lies another stone complex that archaeologists believe predates Stonehenge by almost 2,000 years, Nabta Playa. Located around 700 miles south of the Great Pyramid of Giza and some 60 miles west of the Nile, Nabta Playa is said to have been constructed by a cattle-worshipping cult, who used it to mark the summer solstice and the arrival of the monsoons. The megalith monuments and stone slabs of Nabta Playa were constructed over years of habitation by the nomadic people who passed through the area over thousands of years. The most significant structure among them is the calendar stone circle. The circle is made up of four pairs of large stones and then an assortment of smaller stones. In research published recently about the complex of stones, experts confirmed that the stones were in possible alignment with the stars. Ancient societies all around the world erected massive stone circles like this, aligning them with the sun and stars to mark solstices. The origins of Nabta Playa provide the earliest signs of Egyptian civilization. Mysterious Purple Spheres Arizona residents discovered a strange growth recently during a walk, so they contacted a local news station in Tucson. The media checked out the spheres, reporting that they were like gooey marbles that ooze out a water substance when squished. After speaking to experts, they learned that if the spheres are naturally occurring, they could be a slime mold or jelly fungus. The jelly fungus are diverse and complicated. Identification of species often hinges on microscopic examination, and things are further complicated by the fact that it is often difficult to transport a jelly fungus home in examinable condition. To say nothing of the difficulties encountered with trying to dry and preserve specimens, slime mold is not a plant or animal. It's not a fungus, though it sometimes resembles one. Slime mold, in fact, is a soil-dwelling amoeba, a brainless single-celled organism often containing multiple nuclei. Are these mysterious purple spheres either of these things? Some of the spheres were watery and others translucent. They were completely isolated from the rest of the desert terrain. Others suggest they are some products like deco beads, which are small colored water-filled balls designed to keep plants hydrated. However, that does little to explain why thousands of them would have been put in the desert. Coleman Scop if you ever visit this place, you will be immediately hit by the intense heat of the Namib Desert. There's a scattering of buildings varying in size dotted around the hilly terrain to welcome you. To the abandoned diamond town which was once one of the wealthiest communities in Namibia. The story of Coleman Scop starts in 1908 when a railway worker discovered a glimmering stone while working on the line. They were diamonds. Soon hordes of treasure hunters descended on the area. And within a few years, a town had sprung up, producing 11.7% of the world's total diamond production. So authorities wanted greater control over the incredible riches, declaring this area of Namibia a restricted zone and reserving prospecting rights. Eventually, the townspeople left in droves, abandoning homes and possessions. 
It has been a long time since anyone lived in Coleman Scop. The buildings were once homes and businesses. There was a butcher who specialized in Viennese sausages and a post office that would be crowded on Fridays as mail came into the remote town, population in the high hundreds from the outside world. Those houses are now empty. The bright blue or green paint on the walls or floral wallpaper is being slowly stripped away by time and nature. Rock Art Sites The desert of southern Libya is well known for two things. Thousands of prehistoric cave paintings dating from 12,000 BC to 100 AD, and its alien-like jagged landscape of bizarre basalt monoliths, towering granite mountains, and mushroom-shaped rock formations. This territory, called Tadrart Akakis, has an outstanding universal value for the quality and density of its rock art engravings. Images of hunting, fauna, flora, and lifestyles in prehistoric times. The rock art on this site has survived for 14,000 years. Not only that, the site is significant for the cultural continuity between prehistoric and medieval times that the site reflects. Tadrart Akakis has thousands of cave paintings in very different styles, dating from 12,000 BC to AD 100. For example, there is an intricate network of caves which provided shelter for prehistoric people for thousands of years. This is where there is some of the best rock art from scenes of cows, stylized human figures, and ancient inscriptions. But they are now under serious threat. Since 2009, vandalism has been a continuous problem. Graffiti has been spray painted across the surface of many of the paintings, and people have carved their initials out of the rocks. Efforts to protect this ancient site have been gravely hampered by armed conflict and political chaos. Worst game ever. In 1982, Atari was one of the most successful companies in the United States history, but was also facing significant challenges. Its highly popular gaming console Atari 2600 faced competition from other consoles released by competitors. So attempting to lure Steven Spielberg to make films for Warner Brothers, Warner Communication, the parent company of Warner Brothers and Atari, negotiated an expensive licensing agreement for Atari to make a video game adaptation of Spielberg's latest movie, E.T., The Extraterrestrial. Things did not go well. The developer of the game was only given five and a half weeks instead of the normal six to nine months to develop the game. When the game came out, Atari did not sell anywhere close to what they expected. Plus, customers found the game frustrating to play. The poor performance of this game meant a massive loss for Atari so the company found itself with a surplus of game cartridges that they needed to remove from its warehouse. So they decided to bury the games in a landfill here in New Mexico to prevent people from scavenging them. Over time, the event was forgotten and elevated to a status of an urban legend. So in 2014, some corporations banded together with the government to excavate the site. Only a small fraction, about 1,300 cartridges, were recovered during the major recovery. Shipwreck loaded with gold. Miners recently discovered a ship that went down 500 years ago after draining a man-made lagoon on Namibia's coast. While shipwrecks are often found along Africa's skeleton coast, this one just so happened to be loaded with $13 million worth of gold coins. Cha-ching! It also answers a centuries-old mystery and is what some archaeologists are calling one of the most significant shipwrecks ever found. One reason it took centuries to find is because it was underneath the ocean floor. The mining site concerned was actually located in the surf zone, where the violent action of the waves theoretically made mining impossible. So experts created a man-made lagoon with the surf pounding on the outside. They then pumped the seawater out of the lagoon. It was in this drained lagoon that the wreck was discovered. Experts weren't too surprised by the abundance of shipwrecks on the coast. Sailors once called it the Gates of Hell because of how treacherous sailing was here. The miners alerted geological experts when the ship was discovered and the gold was found six days into the excavation process, among bones and navigational tools. Archaeologists confirmed the wreckage is that of a ship that set sail from Spain in 1533 and disappeared with its crew on board on the way to India. Rare Ancient Scroll in an operation that would put even the most experienced archaeologists to shame, a huge anti-looting dig carried out in the Judean desert has unearthed historical finds of great significance, including fragments of ancient biblical scrolls. 
The operation began in 2017 when government agencies and volunteers set out to survey 50 miles of caves in the Dead Sea, using drones, rappelling, and mountain climbing techniques to access the most unreachable caves. The climactic conditions in these caves enabled the preservation of ancient documents like the Dead Sea Scrolls that include the earliest known copies of the biblical books, and as such have drawn the attention of looters out to make a fortune. The dig's participants wanted to reach these sites before the looters dig. Fragments of a Greek scroll of the Book of the Twelve Minor Prophets, for example, were discovered in a cave where rebels hid almost 1,900 years ago. They are the first biblical scrolls to be discovered in the area in the past 60 years and were located in the Cave of Horror, a 260-foot drop from the cliff's top, and reached only by rope. Highlights of the discovery include a cache of coins, arrowheads, and spear tips, sandals, and fabric. Researchers also found the 6,000-year-old remains of a body naturally mummified in the dry cave, Prada Store in Desert. When you're on a road trip through the western plains of the Lone Star State, just north of Marfa, Texas, you'll spot something peculiar on the side of the road, a Prada store. The place is so mysterious that not many people know about the building's origin, or even what it's doing there in the first place. So why is there a Prada here? There were no Prada stores in the entire state of Texas, not even in the big cities like Houston or Dallas. But now, there is a Prada store in the middle of nowhere. Well, it's actually just an art installation called Prada Marfa. Many visitors are under the impression a real store once functioned there. And though it may look abandoned, it was never even inhabited to begin with. It's a giant plaster, glass, paint, and aluminum art installation that appeared along US Route 90, 26 miles outside the town of Marfa. And it was meant to be a pop architectural land art project. The designer of the luxury brand was even consulted on the project, handpicking the merchandise for the store's interior and allowing the artist to use the Prada logo. The middle of Texas's desert isn't the usual place you'd expect to find art like this, costing a total sum of $80,000, or in other words, about 40 Prada handbags. The site still gets thousands of visitors a year. Mysterious Patterns Google Maps images have revealed an array of mysterious structures and patterns etched into the surface of China's Gobi Desert. One image shows what appears to be a Stonehenge-like arrangement of objects. Another reveals a mock airport runway while several others look more like an aerial view of multiple connected city streets. Not exactly what you'd expect to find in the middle of a desert. Experts believe that many of these 65-foot wide lines were drawn on the desert floor using paint. Chalk or powder would have certainly been blown away by winds. The media has wildly speculated that they might be weapons testing sites, satellite calibration targets, street maps of Washington DC and New York City, or even messages to or from aliens. It turns out that they are almost definitely used to calibrate spy satellites. Satellite cameras focus on the grids, which measure approximately 0.65 miles wide by 1.15 miles long and use them to orient themselves in space. The existence of these calibration targets may seem suspicious or revelatory, but it really isn't. China was already known to operate spy satellites, and many other countries, including the United States, do so as well. The fact that some of the targets are so large indicates that China's spy satellite cameras could have poor resolution. Mystery Lake the lake appeared in the Tunisian desert like a mirage. One minute there was nothing but scorching sand and this large expanse of turquoise water. Some say it's a miracle, while others are calling it a curse. For locals roasting in the African heat, the temptation to cool off in the inviting water quickly overcame any fears about the mysterious pool. Hundreds flocked to what quickly became known as Gafsa Beach to splash, paddle, dive, and fling themselves from rocks into the lake ignoring warnings that the water could be contaminated. Even after the water turned a murky green, they arrived in droves, undeterred. Gafsa became the center of the country's mining industry after phosphate was discovered in the southern Tunisian region in 1886. Tunisia is now the world's fifth largest exporter of phosphate, which is used in industry. Local geologists suspect seismic activity may have ruptured the rock above the water table, sending the liquid to the surface. Other theories have suggested the canyon has simply collected rainwater. 
The site is certainly stunning, and there are many large rocks perfect for diving. But it has become infested with green algae, meaning the water is stagnant and conducive to disease. Mojave Phone Booth It was pure happenstance that a man by the name of Godfrey Daniels even discovered the Mojave Phone Booth's existence. A casual mention of telephone deep in the middle of the desert, miles from any paved roads, accompanied by its number, caught his eye in a publication one evening. The concept that a phone serving a mysterious clientele stood in the Mojave's moonscape, its ring echoing off into nothingness, transfixed him. For over a month, he dialed the phone. Then one day, against all odds, Daniels got a busy signal. In a frenzy, he called until the busy signal gave way to a ring, and a woman answered on the other end. This is the story of how a desert icon became, against all odds, a point of convergence for the masses, bridging the gap between the real and digital worlds. Located between Baker and Las Vegas in Nevada, in the middle of the Mojave National Preserve, there was a phone booth. Now he knew the phone was real, and he could visit it. In person, it was exactly as it had appeared in Daniel's fantasy, with the desert's unrelenting vastness expanding in every direction. He made a call from it to his friend, completing the cycle. But he didn't stop there. Daniels returned home and built a website dedicated to the Mojave phone booth, publishing its number so that all the world could enjoy his finding. Stone Wheels These stone circles of Jordan were discovered in 1920 by a British pilot that flew across the deserts of Jordan. They took several pictures of these immense stone circles, giving us the earliest aerial archaeological photographs of the structures. However, for unknown reasons, they were forgotten by the archaeology world, and it took another 60 years before anyone noticed them again. It was only in the last 10 years they have started to gain more attention. There are 12 of these structures in Jordan, and one was recently found in Syria, and they're all pretty much identically built. These big circles, as they're called, are between 700 to 1500 feet in diameter, and they're almost perfectly round. Their shape can only be seen from above, and at ground level, they appear nothing more than big piles of rocks. Their design is too close to be a coincidence. And this has led archaeologists to believe that, despite the fact they're spread out across the region, they must have served a similar purpose. Evidence from the images, as well as important dating of artifacts on the ground, suggests that these circles were built at least 2,000 years ago. But they may have been constructed in prehistoric times, before writing was invented. 9,000-year-old shrine A team of archaeologists found a roughly 9,000-year-old shrine at a remote Neolithic site in Jordan's eastern desert. The ritual complex was found in a Neolithic campsite near large structures known as desert kites, or mass traps that are believed to have been used to corral wild gazelles for slaughter. Such traps consist of two or more long stone walls converging toward an enclosure. Neolithic hunters probably worked in teams to herd animals into enclosed cells for slaughter. An estimated 5,800 such structures are scattered across the Middle East and Southwest Asia. Within the shrine were two carved standing stones bearing anthropomorphic figures, one accompanied by a representation of the desert kite as well as an altar, hearth, marine shells, and miniature model of the gazelle trap. The proximity of the site to the trap suggests the inhabitants were specialized hunters. The sacral symbolism and ritual performance evidenced were most likely devoted to invoke supernatural forces for successful hunts, and an abundance of prey to capture. The researchers said in a statement that these shrines sheds entirely new light on the symbolism artistic expression, as well as spiritual culture of these unknown Neolithic populations. Abandoned Domes Built in 1983 by a manufacturer of circuit boards for computers and watches, the company owner announced plans to relocate the company's headquarters from California to this 135-acre site in Casa Grande, Arizona. Construction went something like this. After the foundations were complete, giant balloons were mounted onto them, supported by steel skeletons. A coating of polyurethane foam was applied to the outside of each balloon, which hardened to form a layer several inches thick. An additional three inches of concrete was then added to form the outer shell, then the balloons were deflated, creating the domes. The unusual shape and composition of the structures were chosen for their relatively low cost speedy construction time, and efficient insulation. Each structure took approximately six weeks to build and cost about $150,000.
The project was halted, unfinished, in 1983 when the company that built them defaulted on a loan and the bank assumed ownership of the company's assets. Since 1983, the domes have been abandoned. However, the unique shape of the domes are said to allow large amounts of energy to be harnessed, opening portals to the other side. There have been several first-hand accounts of hearing strange voices and seeing dark shadows in the domes. Stone Age Graveyard Archaeologists have uncovered 20 Stone Age skeletons in and around a rock shelter in Libya's Sahara Desert. They date between 8,000 and 4,200 years ago, meaning the burial place was used for millennia. About 15 women and children were buried in the rock shelter, while five men and juveniles were buried under giant stone heaps outside the shelter during a later period when the region turned to desert. At the same site, archaeologists also uncovered huts, animal bones, and plots with traces of the earliest fermented dairy products in Africa. The team concluded that the skeletons were buried over four millennia. The males and juveniles under the stone heaps were buried starting 4,500 years ago when the region became more arid. Rock art confirms the dry up as the cave paintings began to depict goats, which need much less water to graze than cows. Back then, the Sahara Desert region was filled with scrubby vegetation and seasonal green patches. Stunning rock art depicts ancient herding animals such as cows, which require much more water to graze than the current environment could support. The findings suggest the culture changed with the climate. The new discovery also highlights the need to protect the fragile region, which has been closed to archaeologists for years. The graveyard is the largest from the Stone Age found in the Sahara. Desert Kites Thousands of previously unknown prehistoric stone structures have been found in some of the most remote and unexplored regions of the Middle East, thanks to the use of satellite technology. More and more, archaeologists working in remote locations are turning to virtual landscapes when neither aircraft reconnaissance nor archive aerial photographs are available. One such region is the immense swath of land sweeping from northern Syria to Yemen, known as the works of old men by the local people. These structures seem to be the work of prehistoric communities. Some 2,609 new kites alone have been identified between Mesopotamia and Yemen, and many more will doubtless be added in the future. Sites like these have been known since the 1920s, reported by pilots flying over rural towns and villages, forts, and farmsteads. Others were identified in Saudi Arabia in the 1970s and 1980s, this new satellite technology, however, has revealed that the structures are far more numerous and can be found across a much wider area than was previously thought. These startling results have important implications for the potential survival of archaeological sites in one of the least explored parts of the world. And judging by the number of structures already recorded in just this small area, the total number of such sites must run into the hundreds of thousands. Mari Man the Mare Man is a modern geoglyph discovered in 1998. It appears to depict an indigenous Australian man hunting with a boomerang or stick. It lies on a plateau at the Finnis Springs, 37 miles west of the township of Mare in central South Australia. The figure is 1.7 miles tall with a perimeter of 17 miles extending over an area of about 620 acres. Although it is one of the largest geoglyphs in the world, its origin remains a mystery, with no one claiming responsibility for its creation, nor any eyewitness having been found. Notwithstanding the scale of the operation required to form the outline on the plateau floor, somehow one person or a group of people were able to create the geoglyph without being seen. Which speaks to the absolute isolation of this region, cut into the harsh landscape with lines over 115 feet wide and 1 foot deep. The towering Mare Man is easily visible from space. There have been several rumors about its mysterious creation. Some people claim the artwork was simply a publicity stunt by an unknown artist, while others believe it was built by extraterrestrials. But we may never know the true origin of the Mare Man. The awe-inspiring carvings had begun to fade over the years, and the Mare Man had almost disappeared entirely. This caused locals from the nearby town to begin an effort to preserve the iconic carvings. Besides devastating heat, no water, and supreme isolation, there are some pretty unique things found in the deserts around the world. These videos prove that. So, like and subscribe if you love the channel and stick around for more great videos.